Hallelujah. Let's give a hand to Jesus. Amen. In Psalm 118, in verse 23 and 24, the Bible says, This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. We shall do what? We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Now turn to the person next to you and just tell them in Jesus' name, rejoice. Just tell them, rejoice. <laughs> yes, our God is good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the same chapter of, I mean, a book of Psalm 118, verse 15, the Bible says, I can hear a shout of victory in the tent of the righteous. I want us to do a shout, just a shout of victory, because in the tent of the righteous, I want to believe you've come to the house of the Lord with a testimony. The Lord has done something this week. He has kept you alive. You are breathing. You are standing. You are strong. We thank God. Hallelujah. God has done something in your life. And you have a reason to give a shout of victory. Because we don't take it for granted. From Monday until Sunday, God takes you through every day. And you are here. From where you live, you are here. Isn't that a miracle? I am here. It is a miracle. And by the way, you are looking good. Eh? And I can see you are feeling good. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, a shout of victory. I don't know how, to, how it's, <laughs> we're going to do it. But just take a moment. You know, I'll say one, two, three. And then we just do a shout of victory. One, two, three. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Give me a J. Yes. Give me an E. Yes. An S. Yes. A U. Yes. Another S. What name is that? Jesus. What name is that? Jesus. What name is that? Jesus. A big hand clap to Jesus. He's the King of Kings and he's, uh, he's the Lord of Lords. There's a Swahili chorus we used to sing some time back that you, you know would say, Ameni Tendea. I don't know how many know it. Eh? It's an old one. The younger guys may know, but you'll catch up. Hallelujah. Hiya. Let's try it. Ameni Tendea. Ameni Tendea. Ameni tendea, Ameni tendea, Yesu Immanuel, Ameni tendea, Yesu Immanuel, Ameni tendea, Ameni tendea, Ameni tendea, Ameni tendea, Ameni tendea, Yesu Immanuel, Ameni tendea, Yesu Immanuel. Amen. There's a dance I was taught the other day. My children want me to know how to dance. <laughs> but I put a foot in front, I bring it back, I bring it this way, I bring it that way. I said, it's very, very simple. You just simply do like that, like this, like this, like that. Then they told me, Dad, you can also go like this. You can also go like that. Then you go like this, like that, like this, like that. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> As we sing Ameni Tendea, why don't you try something like that? Ameni Tendea. Ameni Tendea. Ameni Tendea. Ameni Tendea. Yesu Immanuel. Ameni Tendea. Yesu Immanuel. Ameni Tendea. Ameni Shindia. Ameni Shindia. Ameni Shindia. Yesu Immanuel, Amen is Yesu Immanuel, Amen is And I know even the ones who are following on radio, Kubamba Radio, and the ones who are following online on our Paki TV, they are also dancing. There is a song in your heart and my heart this morning. There is also a shout of victory in the tent of the Lord has done something this week for sure. He has done something th this week. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And that's why when we gather on a Sunday, one of the things we do is just praise him. Is just lift up his name. Is just glorify him. Because he's the king of kings and the lord of lords. Another big hand clap to Jesus. He's worthy of all the praise and all the glory. He's the king of kings and he's the lord of lords. We are people from different nations here. Different countries represented here. This month, you're going to see a lot of African flags. This is seashells. And uh, we have arranged flags here based on regions. I think East Africa, 
North Africa, Central Africa, uh, we have uh, West Africa, I think uh, South Africa. The missions department has organized the flags in a certain way. Five regions, North Africa, South Africa, Central Africa, East Africa, West Africa. These flags as a point of contact because this month we are bringing Africa to God's altar. Hallelujah. That's what we are doing. And you've been given a booklet to help uh, in the process of the prayer for Africa. I think everybody has it. And Pastor Kennedy has ably uh, presented this. And uh, as you have taken it, it's all blessed. It's all anointed and you are anointed. Hallelujah. So this month, we are bringing Africa to the altar of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Africa has 55 nations. Number five is a number of favor and grace. 55. Kenya is 55 years old. Revival season this year is season number five. I'm releasing favor and grace over this month as we pray together for Africa. And may God's favor flow in the north of Africa, south, east, and west, and central. Let me tell you something. As we pray for this continent, God is going to do a miracle that will create jobs upon jobs. How does this divine abundance come and also time of refreshing? It's through prayer, like Pastor Kinetti said. Borders will come down. It will be easier to move from point A to B. All the differences and wars you see in Africa are going to cease. The materials that are underground, we shall discover them. Hallelujah. We shall do value addition. Are you, are you trusting God for resources? Then pray for Africa. This month for me, I want to touch the soils, you know, soil of the soil. I also want to speak to the air of Africa, the peoples of Africa. Let me tell you this month I'm committed to once again studying the peoples of Africa. Kenya has 40, how many? How many people groups are in Kenya now? Is it 45? At the moment, there used to be 42, yeah? 45. Uganda has how many? 37 people groups, isn't it? Uh, Tanzania has 100, I think, and some. Uh, Cameroon has, I guess, 200 and some. Nigeria has so many people groups. When you pray for Africa, it's about people. It's about the soil. It's about the air. It's about economies. It's about the social life. It's about relationships and dynamics. It is really bringing the continent of Africa before the Lord. And like Pastor Kiniti has said, I'm saying this just again to underline what Pastor Kiniti said. That Sunday, which is the last Sunday, I think it's the 20, is it 29th, Pastor Kiniti? Yes, we shall all come dressed in African attires. It's going to be just colorful. Uh, this place is going to be very, very colorful. And I have adopted a nation, in fact, several nations, and I'm trusting God, each one of us has actually adopted a nation. The future of Africa is very bright in Jesus' name. If you are following online, I want to repeat that statement. The future of Africa is very bright. Isaiah 60 verse 1. Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. In this church, apart from the African nations, we have many other nations. There is Israel here, and my brother from Israel. Uh, yes, <laughs> if would you wave, let's appreciate Israel in Jesus' name. God bless you. And uh, we have many nations here, Germany, uh, Netherlands. So when football is being played, I also want you to understand, people come from those countries. But the beauty of us here, we have also adopted those nations. Now, during the football season, I had adopted Argentina and Nigeria. And I thank God they are resting <laughs> at the moment. Let's see how the next days go. I know on Tuesday at 9 p.m., we are having the semifinals. I also know on Saturdays, we are doing the competition for the third place. Uh, at, nine, uh, at 5 p.m., and then next Sunday, 5 p.m., we are having the finals. As we participate, it's more than football. We are praying for these nations. We are praying for the people. For me, I've been learning strategies on teamwork, how a group of people can come together following a ball, and there is a goal, and they work teamwork dynamics. And one thing I've realized, it is not the team with stars that necessarily wins. It is the team that works as a team. And that's why you can see it's becoming manifest uh, in Russia. They may, some have average abilities, but they are working as a team, and they are rising and rising. My prayer in Africa is that we shall work together, and we shall actually hold hands, and we shall score big if we work as a team. God is good. 
And all the time, amen. Again, turn to the person next to you and just greet them. I, I feel, yes, we need to do this. Yes, yes, they are not there by accident. The Lord has put them there. And I really appreciate. If you are watching on radio and you are next to somebody, Kubamba Radio, <laughs> say hello to somebody. If there is nobody, say hello to yourself. It is possible to touch yourself and actually say hi, hi to myself. Those who are watching, watching online, you can also catch the spirit. Our reading today is from 1 Kings chapter 18. 1 Kings chapter 18. And I'm reading from verse 36. 1 Kings chapter 18 from verse 36 to 46. At the time of sacrifice, this is about Elijah and what he did. At the time of sacrifice, the prophet Elijah stepped forward. God is always looking for somebody in our season and time who will step forward. The prophet Elijah stepped forward and prayed, Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known today that you are God in Israel and that I am your servant and have done all th these things at your command. Answer me, Lord. Answer me. That is, answer me, Yahweh. Answer me. So these people will know that you, Lord, are God and that you are turning their hearts back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and burned up the, the, the sacrifice, the wood, the stones, and the soil, and licked up the water in the trench. When all the people saw this, they fell prostrate and cried, The Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. Then Elijah commanded them, Seize the prophets of Baal. Don't let anyone get away. They seized them, and Elijah had them brought down to the Kishon Valley and slaughtered them there. And Elijah said to Ahab, Go eat and drink, for there is a sound of heavy rain. So Ahab went off to eat and drink. But Elijah climbed to the top of, of Carmel, bent down to the ground, and put his face between his knees. Go and look toward the sea, he told his servant. And he went up and looked. There is nothing there, he said. Seven times Elijah said, go back. The seventh time, the servant reported, a cloud as small as a man's hand is rising from the sea. So Elijah said, go and tell Ahab, he chop your chariot and go down before the rain stops you. Meanwhile, the sky grew black with clouds, the wind rose, a heavy rainstorm came on, and Ahab rode off to Jezreel. The power of the Lord came on Elijah and tucking his cloak into his belt, he ran ahead of Ahab all the way to Israel. Father in heaven, as we are gathered today at the threshold of a season of prayer and trusting you for revival, prayer and fasting and trusting you for revival, Lord, we pray you raise many Elijahs who will stand in the gap. Ezekiel 22, verse 30, Lord, this morning reminds us that you looked for a man who would stand in the gap, and you found none. But today we are here to pray and say, here we are, we are stepping forward. We are stepping into the gap. We're going to do something. And therefore, Lord, we thank you that we have now a season of prayer and fasting. And each one of us can be an Elijah, and we shall step forward. And we shall do something and call on your name for the sake of Africa. Once again, Lord, I thank you for those who are following online, those who are following on Kubamba Radio. I pray a blessing upon each one of us. And as I share this word, I pray your spirit rests on me. Because I prayed in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we all say, Amen. We may have our seats. Again, I have some good news. Our vision, uh, 2040 giving, has gone up now to actually 24%. And uh, we have gone up 2%, I think, uh, from last, last Sunday. And let me tell you, the total uh, cash and pledges is, as, as we stand now, 36,024,698. Why don't you give a hand to the Lord? God is faithful. <clears throat> The title of the message is Refreshed Abundantly. Refreshed Abundantly. May God refresh you, 
sio kidogo but abundantly refreshed abundantly and i have just read the text it is not first kings chapter 16 like the title there says it is from first kings chapter 18 from verse 36 to 46 first kings chapter 18 from verse 36 uh, to 46 refreshed abundantly we want to thank god for this time of refreshment if you are coming for the first time uh, this is the month of the divine overflow and we are trusting God for refreshment. <clears throat> it is time to refresh. There is a man called Elijah who takes action. He steps forward, the Bible teaches us here, and he takes action. Like I have prayed, my prayer is that somebody in a family and in a neighborhood will actually step forward. This is our month of seeing God do something uh, amazing. We'll step forward and do something. There was a nation that was backslidden, but Elijah takes a stand. He takes a position, and because of his position, the nation is revived. God does not require hundreds of people. It takes only one person to make a difference within a family or a city. It only takes up one person who will step forward and do something. Revival is in, in the offing. Refreshment is in the offing. But God will work with an individual who takes a step of faith and is courageous and can step forward and do some action. And in this text, I thank God for the Elijah action. And my prayer and part of the altar call today, my desire is an Elijah will rise. God will raise an Elijah, a man or a woman, the spirit of Elijah, a man or a woman who will actually step forward in this month of revival and do something. Do something. So Elijah is God's person. And he distinguishes himself from the rest. When every, the, the, the nation is backsliding and sliding in the wrong direction, he stands up and he says, enough is enough. My country will not drift in the wrong direction. We have adopted today African nations. You are the catalyst, the trigger of revival for that nation. You are the catalyst of refreshment for that nation you have adopted. And uh, one of the things I do when I adopt a country or adopt a place, I write that on a paper, a small card, paper card, and then I keep it in my pocket. And everywhere I go, when I have a moment, I look at it and I pray. But I thank God especially for us because we've been given a nice booklet with some intro information. You can get much more information. Uh, you can, you know, refresh what we have here. But you have been given a guide, this one here, that you can actually carry around. Pastor Sami today led us in praying for, uh, this is Seychelles, uh, uh, for, for, for this, this country. And also I think Mauritius. And uh, you can take time with this booklet. Elijah was not carrying his nation in a, in a booklet like this one. But Elijah carried his nation in his heart. And his soul, like you and me, see on a daily basis the things that happen around us. And he reached a place, he said, I am going to raise a kingdom standard. I'm going to raise something new, something different in my country, in my workplace, in my neighborhood. Things will not continue to be like this again. Something has to shift and something has to turn. And therefore, Elijah brings lessons to the 21st century and, and actually brings lessons to us that we can borrow from. And there are three things I want us to consider here that uh, uh, Elijah did. First of all, Elijah's altar. Secondly, Elijah's prayer. And thirdly, heaven's response. When we do our bit, God does his bit. God will do nothing except by human instrumentation that is totally surrendered to him and to his will and committed to doing his will on planet Earth. And that is why the singing group today led us in a song, I think during the offering, on the Lord's Prayer. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. And God is looking for a human instrument. My prayer is this, that human instrument will be you and me. 
if there is going to be any change in the economic sector, social sector, political sector, the health sector, the housing sector, the legal area, the medical area, if there is going to be change and refreshment and revival, God is looking for someone in that context to take a position, to take a stand, to step forward. And God is going to make a change. Yesterday, I had a meeting with, uh, with some women. It's an association of women uh, who are dealing with extractives, Kenyan women. And they have chosen to step forward. And they have gone into the mining industry yesterday. And it was amazing listening to these women. And they were telling me, Pasi, we have decided. We are also going to mine. We are going to the mines. And Kenya is blessed. Hallelujah. There is so much underground. And these ladies have taken a position. And these are prayer for women. And they have said, we are going into the field of mining. And they have formed an association. Association of Women in extracti Extractives in Kenya. You know? And uh, they are doing exploits. I want to say all things are possible. Hallelujah. If God gave Elijah a breakthrough, carrying a nation, adopting a nation called Israel, and bringing a nation to an altar. If God gave Israel a breakthrough then, through this one man, God is able to give a breakthrough through one woman or one, one, one man who takes an adoptive position, adopts a family, a nation, a neighborhood, and brings it to the altar. So this month of prayer and fasting is not going to be wasted. Hallelujah, I declare in Jesus' name. And I'm commissioning Elijah today. Today, my prayer is commissioning Elijah. There's going to be fire out there. <laughs> I'm commissioning Elijah. And I'm talking of the fire of the Lord. The first thing was Elijah's altar. Elijah's altar. And this is addressing the root problem or the root of the problem. You can never really solve a problem until you go to the roots, the root of the problem or what is called the foundations. You go back to the foundations of a nation, of a family, even of a neighborhood or a school system, this, a school which has a history. Unless you go to the foundations. I have seen God, you know, bring a head, a head of a school, somebody into a school, and this person goes to the altar, you know, to the place of prayer, and God gives them discernment and tells them for this school to have success, this is the root of the problem and guides this person to go into that root, the root of the problem. In Jeremiah chapter 1, Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 10, Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 10, if I can have it on the screen. I want us to read this verse together. Let's read it together. See, today I appoint you over nations and kingdoms to do what? To uproot and tear down, to destroy and overthrow to build and to plant. Make this one first person. Make this one first person. Let's make it first person. See, today I am appointed over nations and kingdoms. To do what? To uproot and tear down. To destroy and overthrow. To build and to plant. This is Jeremiah. And God, this is a year of divine appointments. God appoints Elijah and God is appointing you. Today, that time it was Elijah, uh, Jeremiah, and in the text it is Elijah. Today, it is you, and God has appointed you. God has appointed you to do a very, very special work. And so Elijah raises an altar, and the purpose of this altar is so that it can go to the, deep, the depth of the problem, the depth of the problem. In 1 Kings chapter 18, from verse 30 uh, to 35, just listen to this. Then Elijah said to all the people, You come here to me. You come here to me. They came to him. And he repaired the altar. That's what the Bible says. This is where the problem was. He repaired the altar of the Lord. In other words, the altar of the Lord was in ruins. That's where the problem was. And he goes to the root of the problem. He repaired the altar of the Lord, which had been torn down. Elijah took 12 stones, and each stone for each tribe. This was very strategic. 
It is like bringing Africa before the Lord and you put 55 stones. You collect 55 stones. Each stone for every nation. One for each tribe descended from Jacob. And again, because there are 12 tribes descended from Jacob, this is a reminder of the covenant that God had with Jacob, to whom the word of the Lord had come, saying, Your name shall be Israel. With the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord, and he dug a trench round it large enough to hold two sears of seed. He arranged the wood, cut the bull into pieces, and laid it on the wood. Then he said to them, Fill four large jars with water and pour it on the offering and on the wood. Do it again a second time. There are four jars, large jars of water, four of them. Do it a second time. So they become eight. He said, and they did it again. So he said, do it a third time. So they become twelve. Twelve jars of water and twelve stones. Third time. He ordered, and they did it a third time. The water ran down around the altar and even filled the trench. That is in verse 35, the root of the problem. The nation of Israel had departed from Jehovah, departed from the living God, and started following Baal and Asherah. In other words, the Baal spirit and Asherah spirit were ruling. Baalism, Asherahism was actually reigning in the land. The nation had walked away literally from God. Ahab, who was the king, and Jezebel, who was the queen, were actually supporting the prophets of Baal and Asherah. They had even been brought right into the center of power, and they had compromised power. It was compromised by these evil forces. Everywhere you went, you would find the symbols of Baal, the symbol of Baal, which was actually a bull, meaning strength, you know, Evil power, it also meant uh, uh, sexual experiments. And this is the spirit that was actually ruling over Israel at that time, supported by Ahab and Jezebel. And so the forces that had risen were really mighty and powerful. The root of the problem is that people had shifted their eyes from God and they were worshipping other gods. Baal was a god of the Canaanites and it was very clear that the nation of Israel must never worship any other god. In Exodus chapter 20, and we'll have it on the screen, Exodus chapter 20, Exodus chapter 20, verse 1, and God spoke, uh, spoke all these words, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make uh, for yourselves an image in the form of anything in heaven above or on earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me. The nation was distracted. And people can be distracted. Families can be distracted. Uh, cities can be distracted. The eyes are in the wrong direction. And they are worshiping not the living God, but just Idols, Baal and Asherah, they were totally distracted. And because of walking away from God, their hearts were not following God, then there was judgment in the land, judgment over the soil, judgment in the air, in the atmosphere, and therefore any economic activity could actually not prosper. The root of the problem. And so people are waking up very early in the morning, and they are going to their workplaces and coming back in the evening. They are earning money, but somehow they don't make progress. There is a struggle in the land. And the root of the problem is that Baal and Asherah, that altar has been raised in the land. And even the king and his wife are serving that altar. And so the altar that is speaking over the land is the altar of the bull. is the one speaking over the land. And because of that, uh, God is jealous. Our God is jealous when our hearts wave, <clears throat> wave away from him. Then what is left is just judgment. You know, when you walk away from God, now the only thing left for you is judgment. The Bible says, there is a way that seems right to a man, but it ends where? 
in destruction. But Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Now because Jehovah's altar is in ruins at this particular time, the whole nation is judged. The soil is bitter. They try to plant agripreneurship, cannot function. Planting seed, little harvest, even because of this judgment, there is no rain. There is actually drought for a whole three and a half years, not a single drop of water because of judgment. God has withheld his rain over the land. The atmosphere, the, the air is not healthy. All kinds of sicknesses are actually happening and the hospitals are getting full. I have realized even here in Kenya, we are building more hospitals and I don't want to say it's bad to do that and increasing the hospital beds. But should we be praying that we actually reduce them? Amaji. Sometimes prayers of revival can be very powerful prayers. <laughs> you know that touch certain sectors in a big, big way. And uh, I really bless the Lord for Medix and the, the work you do in the healing ministry, you know, working to, with the Lord. But sometimes you find because judgment is in the air. We are breathing judgment. We are walking judgment. We are touching judgment. You try to sleep, the, the bed is judged. And you go into that bed, you toss this way, and you toss that. The bed looks so nice. It is actually looking good. The roads are super highways. They are looking very nice. And the cars look nice. Yeah? But there is judgment everywhere. And Elijah looked and he realized the root problem is that people, the people's hearts have turned away from the Lord. In Joshua chapter 24, Joshua chapter 24, I want to read from verse 14 and also verse 15. Joshua chapter 24. And that's why we are talking about times of refreshing and also revival and praying for revival this month. Now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods your ancestors worshipped beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt and serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served beyond, and then verse 16, the Euphrates, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But let's read the last part together. But us... For me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Can somebody make that confession regarding yourself and your household? Where you say, as for me and my house. We'll do what? We'll serve the Lord. The root of the problem, there is an altar in the land. And that altar is dedicated to Baal and Asherah. God cannot share his glory. He is a jealous God. There is no way. There can be multiple relationships. God will not share his glory with any other. He is the king of kings. He is the lord of lords. He is El Shaddai. He is Elohim. He is Yahweh. There is no one like the God of Elijah. And Elijah steps forward. He says, enough is enough. I got to raise a new altar. Before that, he has challenged the king, Ahab. To bring all the prophets, 450 of them, 450 prophets of Baal and there are others of Asherah, to bring them to a contest on Mount Carmel. It is a spiritual warfare mountain. It is a place to fight the battle for the nation. A place to fight the battle for the nations, like we are talking about the nations of Africa. And this month we are racing, we are coming to Mount Carmel. Elijah's are coming to Mount Come on, we are coming to the mountain of the Lord and we are bringing uh, the nations of this continent and uh, we are trusting the Lord for a breakthrough. And he challenged all these false gods, I mean all these false prophets and their gods and he says, let's meet an appointment. We have an appointment on a mountain. And uh, let us look for two bulls. You get one bull, I will get one bull. Then you, because you are many, in your altar that you have always been at, you are the first ones to go. You put your altar together. You cut your bull. Put it on the, uh, on the altar. But there is only one condition. Don't light any fire. Let the fire come from above. Let it be Jehovah's fire. Let the fire come from above. And the test is this. If your God is the living God, then fire will come and consume the offering. But if 
my God, Jehovah is the living God, fire will come and consume the sacrifice. Real, a spiritual warfare moment. And I want to say to the kingdom of darkness, your time is up in Jesus' name. Across Africa, your time is up. All these wars we see and all these struggles and the way the media has covered Africa as a continent of malnutrition, of poverty. I am so saddened when I hear people are coming from North Africa through the Mediterranean. They enter boats and they are packed like sardines under, under whatever, you know, ukondani, like sardines. And sometimes all of them die in the sea before they get to Europe. You know, uh, it's, it's really sad. It's really, really sad. And my prayer is that we open our eyes now, the peoples of Africa, and see that God is giving us a month where we must do something like Elijah. And he said, okay, you have been doing this thing for a long time. In fact, the whole country of Israel has been taken over by Baal and Asherah. But I am here, one man with God. And you are 450 plus on the other side. These two bulls take yours, I take mine. And let us go to the altars now. It is time for the altars. It is time to go to the altar again. Let us go to the altar. And they had all the time. From morning until midday. They have put their sacrifice there. Nothing doing. Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. Elijah's altar is a special altar. And somebody is raising a special altar right here. In the name of Jesus. Nothing happening. All those alt other altars are powerless and they are actually useless. Nothing happening. Then from midday to 3 p.m., until Elijah starts laughing at them, and he's saying, maybe your God is sleeping, maybe your God is off duty, maybe uh, your God has gone on holiday, maybe your God has gone to the toilet for the period that uh, <laughs> you've actually been praying, and let's hope he can come back. And so he keeps taunting these guys. And you know, they got more frenzied in their ritual jumping, dancing, running around, and shouting. They go to the place, they started cutting themselves, and even blood started coming out. Nothing is happening. That's a dead altar. It's a, an altar that's actually a lie. And Elijah wanted the whole nation publicly. Imagine televisions. Television, you know, cameras are actually on that. And these guys are running around, and people are watching. But nothing is happening from that altar. You know, he wanted the whole nation to see that these are not gods at all. By the time of the sacrifice, around 3 p.m., around there, he said, okay, you have tried. Let me now try mine. Now the altar that Elijah raises, as you had 12 stones, and then he puts wood on top. Then there is a bull. He cuts it, puts it on top of the, of the, of the wood. Then he puts a trench, big trench all around. Then he asks for water just to prove that our God is powerful, for water to be poured, one jar, another jar, 12 jars, Elijah's altar is set. The root of the problem is at the roots, the foundations, and the altar that is ruling. And I thank God for Elijah's who are getting discernment, even as I'm preaching now and sharing this word, uh, you know, uh, knowing that some, the, the spiritual condition of a person can affect everything else that they are trying to do. If your spirituality is not right, you can never know peace. Your life needs to be realigned again and get the right uh, spirituality and have the right altar ruling in your life. Jesus Christ, the ultimate uh, sacrifice, who went to the altar uh, at Calvary, and you know Jesus was crucified on the cross, and uh, that's a powerful altar. And my prayer is if you don't have the cross inside you, today you can again overthrow, uproot all the other altars in your life and take up the altar that is Jesus Christ inside your heart. Because there's no way you can have victory without Jesus. Now you can see we have put the cross there and the cross there and the cross there. We've also put a, a clock there and we are saying this is Africa's time. Hallelujah. This is Africa's time. The cross is the answer for Africa. This is the moment for Africa. The altar is being raised once again across Africa. This hour, this season, this time is Africa's time. And we are raising a new altar. And so Elijah takes time to put up an altar. But not just Elijah, Elijah's um, altar. There is Elijah's prayer. Number two. Elijah's prayer. 
In 1 Kings chapter 18 from verse 36 to 39, the Bible says, At the time of sacrifice, and remember this month, we are talking about the divine overflow. We are talking about a time to refresh. A time to refresh. So the hour comes. The time comes. At the time of sacrifice, the prophet Elijah stepped forward and prayed, Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known today that you are God in Israel and that I am your servant and have done all these things at your command. Answer me, Lord. He says, answer me, Lord. Answer me. So these people will know that you, Lord, are God and that you are turning their hearts back again. The Bible goes on to talk about the fire. And I'll be come to, coming to that in verse 38. But verse 37. Answer me, Lord. Answer me. So these people will know that you, Lord, are God. And that you are turning their hearts back again. Elijah's prayer is an amazing prayer. If we go to 2 Chronicles chapter 14. 2 Chronicles chapter 14. I believe in verse 7. 2 Chronicles chapter 14. And that's a very important verse for us. As we go into the revival uh, time, time of prayer, Second Chronicles, that is Second uh, Chronicles, chapter f- seven, verse fourteen, chapter seven, seven, verse fourteen. Sorry, Second Chronicles, chapter seven, and verse fourteen. Let's read it together. If my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I'll do what. I'll hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. The next verse. Now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to the prayers offered in this place. Let me make a declaration. God's eyes are open. His ears are attentive to the prayers we are offering this month. How many people believe with me? Yes, I see the refreshing coming in Jesus' name. Elijah's prayer. If you look at verse 14 that we just read, there are certain ingredients that are required for prayer. If my people, Elijah is God's person, if my people who are called by my name, called by his name, the second thing is humility, will humble themselves and then pray, then seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, that's repentance. Then God says, I will hear from heaven, I'll forgive their sin and will heal their land. And so Elijah steps forward, sets up an altar. But the second thing he does, he does a very short prayer. It's not a ritual. It's a prayer based on a relationship. If my people who are called by my name, a prayer based on a relationship, not a ritual. This is not a religious month. Fasting is not a ritual. The prayers we are entering into 21 days is not a ritual. It's because we have a relationship with God that we are stepping forward like Elijah and we are beginning to pray. He was a humble man, a repentant man before the Lord. And then he began to articulate his prayer. And he said, answer me, Lord. Answer me, Lord. Answer me, Lord. You know Matthew 7, 7 says the following. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened. For whoever asks, receives. And whoever seeks, finds. And whoever knocks, As we pick up this mantle of prayer, I want you to know that God is waiting for that prayer. As I pray for the nation that I'll be praying for, I know God is waiting for my prayer. That's how important you are. That's how important I am in God's plan. We are all VIPs. You know, God is waiting. As far as prayer is concerned, and let me tell you, when it comes to prayer, you have a direct link with God. You talk to God directly, not by proxy. There are some people who come and they say, Pastor, your prayer is more powerful than mine. God hears you more quickly. In fact, last time you prayed for me, Pastor, and answers came like this. I am back again. Pastor, pray for me. While that's okay, because there's a prayer of agreement where two or three gather in the name of Jesus, I want you to know you are a VIP in the realm of prayer. And it doesn't have to be a very long prayer. It can be a very short prayer. Answer me. Answer me, Lord. Just answer me. Hear me, Lord. Jehovah God, would you hear me? Answer me. A very, very short prayer. There are so many people not praying because they are discouraged by thinking 
you have to be a prayer warrior and prayer a long prayer. As we mobilize ourselves this month, I want you to know you can wake up in the morning and change the destiny of a day. You can wake up in the morning, raise an altar for that day. You can command a day. The other day, I taught us the prayer of Joshua when he said, The sun to stand still until he annihilates the enemy. And God heard the prayer of that man. And the day was extended by 24 hours. You and I in the 21st century, the same dynamic in Joshua's day, in Elijah's day, is the same dynamic that is true today. You can wake up in the morning just by your bedside. If my people, your God's person, will humble themselves, you know, you can kneel by your bedside. And then when you kneel by your bedside, confess your sins, do a, a prayer of repentance. In other words, remove the foundation of sin that may be anywhere in your life or maybe in your family's life. And then you pray a very simple prayer. I pray somebody commits today this month as we pray and fast to set apart an hour in the morning. For me, it's usually 5 a.m. And my mind works best <laughs> around that time. 5 a.m. And 5 a.m., I'll come, come out, come next to my bed. And it doesn't have to be a very special place. It can just be near, just, just near your bed or in the room somewhere. And right there, you say, this is the hour of my God. And I am entering the place of prayer. May heaven listen. God is looking and God is hearing. And there is not a single prayer you will pray that will get wasted. Elijah's prayer, count the words in the prayer, God answers 100%. He comes through 100%. Prayer is not a complex issue. Prayer is a relationship. Prayer is communion with God. And you just come and you call God, you call God your friend. My friend, God in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. <laughs> Yahweh, my papa. You can use even uh, that language. And enjoy prayer. You know, there are times when we come to the place of prayer and we, we change. The configuration changes. Even the face looks different. And it's like uh, you are fighting somebody. Now, the, the ones of Baal, Baal and Asherah, they were fighting. It was quite a struggle. Compare the followers of Baal and Elijah. Quite a difference in the place of prayer. Elijah is relaxed, a simple prayer. But you don't have to really, really change your configuration. Just come as you are. You are here in this service. And you left the church. Many years ago, you have come back for the first time. Back into the church system. You are listening on radio. And uh, you had even given up on the church. You are watching online. You had given up on the church because of religion. And you know rituals. And you have to know certain words. As if words open doors. You have to pray in a certain way. You even have to kind of uh, uh, chew sugar cane. You know, so sounding shh, you know, like doing shh, 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 shh. When you're praying, so the prayer sounds like it's spiritual. And it is actually connecting with the heavens. <laughs> and uh, you gave up. And you said, oh, this is cosmetic. It's all surface. They are all playing games. I have given up on prayer. God is calling us again to the place of prayer. And he's saying, I am able. I want to do a, give you a breakthrough, but only by prayer. And he's looking for somebody who can pray. And the devil knows that prayer is a powerful weapon. And so he keeps people from prayer by making them feel it's very complicated. Very simple. Three minutes, five minutes by your bedside. Simple. You don't have to know many words. In Jesus' name, you're raising an altar for the kingdom. You're commanding your day just by the, the side of your bed. And then you say, today I want to miss breakfast in honor of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords in devotion to Him. For some of us, we may choose to just miss breakfast. You have your lunch and dinner, or, or miss lunch, have breakfast, dinner. Some may want to miss three meals in a day, or some maybe miss two and then have one in the evening. But during that time, it's a time of devotion. We have a whole stretch of 21 days, seven times three. May you have triple breakthroughs. Seven times three. Seven, seven, seven. Triple seven. In the month of July, yeah? Seven times three in the seventh month of the year, 2018. 18 is the number of life. La Haim. As you do the prayer and fasting, may life come in your direction. Hallelujah. Very simple prayer, just by your bedside. Even if it's just simply, you say the following. Jesus, 
be in control of my day. As simple as that. Prayer is the best thing you can ever do. It's the sweetest thing you can ever do. It is meeting your friend, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. It is talking to him heart to heart. Elijah knows his God. And he doesn't complicate prayer. He makes it very, very simple. And he says, just answer me. And it is amazing. Can we learn from the Elijah type of prayer? To move a big mountain, you don't need a choreographed or rehearsed prayer. You don't need to pray like Pastor Simon with all the jargon. No. Just pray like yourself. So you are here for the first time. And you've been away. You ran away. I'm coming. I'm telling you. It's not religion. It's a relationship. Hallelujah. God loves you the way you are. May God revive your prayer life. Prayer is very, very simple. It's communion with God. It's just simply talking to God in your own way, in your own language. And you know, it's amazing. The others tried to ask for fire. There was no fire coming. Elijah prayed a simple prayer for heaven's fire to leak, to come and pick the sacrifice. Today, may somebody place themselves as a sacrifice on God's altar, and may Holy Spirit come, fire come upon you. Hallelujah. Yes, you just come to God's presence, and you say, the fire from above, I give myself as a sacrifice. May the fire of the Holy Spirit come upon me and refresh my prayer life, refresh my reading of the Bible, Refresh my fire again for lost souls. Can you imagine? So many people are getting lost in Africa. They don't know Jesus. Then yet the churches are filled with people who come on Sunday, but between Monday and Saturday, they are back in their comfort zones. There is no prayer. There are no tears anymore for the lost. Nations are getting lost. But Elijah says, my nation will not get lost. As long as I am around, I enter the prayer, the prayer closet. And I ask for revival. I'm asking for fire. I'm asking for fire from above. The fire of love. Loving your wife, loving your husband, loving your... That fire is gone and we can ask for fire again. And you say, let the fire of God, that passion, that energy, that zeal, let the fire of God come back to me. Somebody is here saying, Pastor, my life is flat. In fact, it is flat. It has gone flat. I'm praying, may God's fire come back to you. Hallelujah. <clears throat> God's fire. This is a kind of prayer. Elijah, he's called the prophet of fire. <laughs> the prophet of the Jehovah, the prophet of fire. And he's asking for fire, uh, for fire from above. But finally, of course, we have heaven's response. Heaven's response. In verse 38 to verse 46, 1 Kings chapter 18, from verse 38. Then the fire of the Lord fell. That's what the Bible says. And burnt up the sacrifice, the wood, the stones, and the soil, and also licked up the water in the trench. When all the people saw this, this was an amazing, amazing thing. They fell prostrate. That's what you call revival. That's what you call refreshment. That's what you call people's hearts turning back to God. When the people saw this, they fell prostrate and cried, The Lord, He is God. Now God is brought back center of the economy center of the life of the people. The Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. Let me tell you, this shout was very loud. All the people, together in one voice, they cried, they said, the Lord, he is God, exclamation mark. The Lord, he is God. May we get to a point where everywhere we go, every office, judicial office, parliament, you know, finance, finance office, police, medical rooms, everywhere we go, and this is my prayer, we will hear the voice, the Lord is God. May God be magnified, may, Lord, may, uh, may Jehovah be lifted up, and we hear the sound, the Lord is God, everywhere we go. Then Elijah commanded them, seize the prophets. This is the moment, this month is the moment. The powers of darkness must come down. We are seizing our moment. Seize the prophets of Baal. Don't let anyone get away. They seized them. And Elijah had them brought down to the Tukishan Valley and slaughtered there. And Elijah said to Ahab, Go eat and drink, for there is a sound of a heavy rain. 
So Ahab went off to eat and drink, but Elijah climbed to the top of Mount Carmel, bent down to the ground, and put his face between his knees. Go and look toward the sea, he told his servant, and went up and looked. There is nothing there, he, he said. Seven times, Elijah said, go back. The seventh time, and that's why this is the seven, we're in the seventh month, July. The seventh time, the servant reported, a cloud as small as a man's hand is rising from the sea. So Elijah said, go tell Ahab, he chop your chariot and go down before the rain stops you. Meanwhile, the Bible says in verse 45, the sky grew black with clouds, the wind rose, a heavy rainstorm came on, and Ahab rode off uh, to Jezreel. The power of the Lord came on Elijah, and tucking his cloak in his belt, he ran ahead of Ahab all the way to Jezreel. He went faster than the chariots so that he could give the correct version of the miracle before Ahab gets there and gives another kind of testimony. And uh, Elijah gets there before Ahab. The forces of God will get there before the forces of darkness in Jesus' name. There is acceleration in the house. Now when he finished praying, suddenly the power, the, the fire of God came down and uh, licked, licked the sacrifice and the stones, everything, the water and the soil. This is heaven's response. Now because of that fire and because of God's happiness with this sacrifice that was given, suddenly the heavens open. Let me tell you, when you put up the right altar and God is happy, the first thing he does, the heavens do what? They open in your favor. And where there was no sunlight, where you felt like you're in darkness, all of a sudden the light rays start coming in that direction. Where there was no rain, all of a sudden, Water, the rain, the rain start coming because now the heavens are open. And when the heavens are open, the blessings of God come. And when the blessings of God come, the curse and the judgment is reversed. And from there, you plant, like I said last Sunday, a single seed. And you actually get 30, 60, 100. You put little effort, but what comes back is really, really multiplied many times over. As we pray and fast this month, I am seeing the floodgates of heaven open. I am seeing abundant refreshment from the King of kings and the Lord of lords coming in our direction. Whichever area of your life that you desire to see refreshment in, God is saying, I'm doing it because I'm bringing revival. I am touching your finances once again. I'm touching your health once again. I'm touching your career once again. I'm touching your relationships once again. Let me tell you, Human strength can achieve only so much. But when you release, we turn back to God and allow his power to work in our lives, we are able to achieve much, much more. Because he's the God of the much more. The key to abundant refreshment is held by God and no other. He holds that key. And that key is moved by prayer. And when people repent before the Lord and surrender to him, then God uses that key and he opens the heavens. And because he is pleased, judgment goes away. The curse goes away. All of a sudden, he pours blessing upon blessing. My prayer today, even as I come to the end of this sermon, is that God will raise an Elijah, a man or a woman. And I'm praying that we shall pray like Elijah. We shall ask this month, someone will ask for the fire of the Lord that comes, leaks the sacrifice, brings back passion into people's lives, brings healing, and also pray that the heavens open like uh, Elijah prayed. And the servant was sent the first time, so nothing. The second time, so nothing. The third time, seventh time, he says, I can see something little. Suddenly the Lord is opening the heavens for the rains to come down. And Elijah, based on that, told him, go tell Ahab to hitch his chariot because the rains are actually here. And not just any rains, abundant rain. Can somebody hear the sound of abundant rain over Africa? Do you see this is Africa's hour? Do you see this is Africa's moment? Are you sensing it together with me? Now God is raising Elijahs in our continent. The young people who are here, God bless you, uh, big time. As you take your mantle, instead of taking a defeatist position and saying, I can't do anything. 
You go there and you say, I am here. I'm going to make a difference. When I was in that uh, conference yesterday for miners, people who mine, I remember saying in my heart, Psalm 24, 1, the earth is the Lord's end, the fullness therein. Surrounding me were geologists, were investors. In fact, the principal secretary for geology and mining was also there. The, fa the first lady of Trucana County was there too. And I was sitting around there. In my heart, I was saying, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness therein. And in my heart, I was praying and saying, there's a spiritual dimension to prosperity. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. I know the God who owns these things. And so in my heart, I was praying. These are geologists. They are technical people. I am seeing the spiritual nature of things. In fact, when I talked to the principal secretary uh, for geology, I think, and mi mining, Mr. John, he told me, you know what? Pastor, there is a spiritual, he confirmed the same thing. He told me, we were in the VIP room that time. He told me, Pastor, there is a spiritual angle to everything, including <laughs> mining. So in my heart, I was praying. And I say, God, open up the mines. Hallelujah. Let the treasures come out. And let the people of Africa experience the blessings that come from above. Our God is more than able to lift us from where we are to another level and another level for his own glory. Because of Elijah's prayer, Israel was changed. Times of refreshing came. The nation was healed. Prosperity came back again. They were aligned with God. And today, as I release you into this week, and you act like Elijah's, I am seeing God doing great and mighty things. In fact, people will come to Paki, and they'll be asking, what is this? We can see a fire in your direction. Hallelujah. We are seeing changes in your people, wherever they are, the various platforms where they serve. We are seeing changes. What is it you are doing here in Westlands? And we shall, I shall tell them the same secret. I will simply tell them, bring down the altars of evil. From the new altar, raise a prayer. Ask for fire. Yes? And as the fire comes, the Lord also opens upward the heavens. I'll give them the secret of Elijah. And then the rains are coming. And they will see you blessed everywhere you go. And they will ask, who is the God of this people? Hallelujah. I'll give them that formula. And today, I release you with the Elijah formula for breakthrough. Elijah formula for abundance. Elijah formula for refreshment. Go back to that same house you came from today. Do what Elijah did and test what I'm saying today. If the God I know will not respond the same way he responded in the day of Elijah and sends a season of refreshment in your direction. Let's all stand up now as we pray together. I want us to spend just a short moment of reflection before I lead us in prayer, reflecting on the things I have actually said. We all come from a constituency, and you're going back to that constituency. More than that, by your geographical placing, family placing, any other placing God has given you, he has also given extended constituencies, given you extended constituencies. And God is saying, as you reflect on this message, that I am raising you now, like I did for Jeremiah, to go and uproot and destroy. There are things that need to be uprooted and also destroyed. But I also chosen you and appointed you to go and plant. My, my commission today, Jeremiah 1.10, if you give me on the screen again, my commission for us today comes from that Jeremiah 1 and verse 10. In this moment of reflection, is where you say, I choose to be commissioned. The Lord has appointed me. But today, I choose to be commissioned to be a Jeremiah or an Elijah. And I am going to my constituency. I'm going back to those places. And I'm going to decree a new season. Because with God, all things are possible. I have challenged at a personal level some people who have told me back in the village, things have never worked. And I've told them, take the next vehicle. In fact, there are some I told this week. I told them, 
go this month, go all the way back there. And I teach them to go uh, do certain things there and pray. And God is, and some people say that's foolish. I know it's faith. That's not foolish. And God is saying in that constituency, God wants to give you victory. God wants to replenish you and refresh you abundantly. He's appointing you today as Elijah, as a Jeremiah, as you go back to that constituency, that soil, you can touch it once again. That air, you can speak into it. Environmental uh, health, you can speak into that. The spirits in the air, you can cast them out in Jesus' name. This is where the commission is coming from. And I want us to read it before I pray. We read this together, make it first person. See, today, I am appointed. The Lord has appointed me over nations and kingdoms to uproot and tear down, to destroy and overthrow to build and to plant. Just once more, first person. See, today I am appointed over nations and kingdoms to uproot and tear down, to destroy and overthrow, to build and to plant. Let's lift our hands to God. These hands, my God, that have come up are like the hands of Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 8, where he said, here I am, Lord, send me. Lord, I know the church in Africa has a strategic role to play in the economy, in the social life, even in the physical health of the nation, in the field of education. The church in Africa has a strategic role in art and music and in science, in value addition. The church in Africa has a strategic role to play in family, in relationships. Our church has a role in the neighborhoods, on the roads, in the valleys, in the lakes, in the oceans. The church and the church's people, we are the church. We are taking back our mantle. We are taking back our calling. We are taking back our role. Somebody is saying here, on behalf of your family, I'm taking back my mantle. The pastor has opened my eyes. I am taking back my role. My God, I bring the church in Africa. And I bring the church in repentance. Because you have said, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways and pray, then I'll hear from heaven, I'll forgive their sins, and I'll heal their land. There is human action in the verse, and there is divine action in the verse. My Father, I repent on behalf of the church in Africa. And I'm praying for new fire. I'm praying for new fire. I'm praying for new fire. My God, you have placed us in a particular platform, but we have been quiet. We have been even apologetic. We have been squeezed in a corner. I'm praying for new passion for new fire, for new energy. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come like Pentecost. Holy Spirit, come. Let the fire come upon each one of us once again. Holy Spirit, fire, come. Holy Spirit, fire, come. My Father, thank you for forgiving our sin, of not opening our eyes in our day and time to see the task that you have given to us. And today we pray together according to that scripture, that the, the forces of evil where they have gained ground now be reversed. Every area, neighborhood, corner, any situation where the enemy, the idol called Baal and Asherah, those spirits, evil spirits, have had an upper hand. Today we are speaking that these ones be destroyed now in the name of Jesus Christ. Like Elijah prayed in his day, we reclaim Moy Avenue in Nairobi. And we are praying the fire of revival that turns all those evil dens to places of God. Where people will say Jehovah is God. Jehovah is God once again. Moy Avenue, Uhuru Highway, Koinange Street, Haile Selassie, Jogo Road, Juja Road, Limuru Road, Mombasa Road. Mombasa, uh, Thika Superhighway, the, 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 the Waiyaki Way, 
Lord, somebody is mentioning a road. You know those roads, some of them. I don't know them. You know them. We are taking authority right now. Oh, a fire from above upon those places. Consuming all the evil works and setting new altars in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, pray like an Elijah, my friend. Wherever you are right now, you're watching online. God can see where you are. You're following on Kubamba Radio. Pray like Elijah. Call the fire of God. You know where this fire needs to go. Right now, righteousness, sin is a reproach to a nation. But righteousness exalts a nation. Right now, I see the fire of the Holy Spirit in North Africa. In West Africa, I see the fire of the Holy Spirit. In Central Africa, I see the fire of the Holy Spirit. In East Africa, I see the fire of the Holy Spirit. In South Africa, I see the fire of the Holy Spirit. The whole of Africa covered by the fire, the fire of the Holy Spirit. There is revival, revival moving from east to west, to north, to south, east and central, and then to the ends of the earth. My God, I thank you. This is the day to pray the prayer of Elijah and to ask the fire to come and to consume the sacrifice. I want to tell you, congregation, as you are raising your hands to God and we are stepping forward like Elijah, God is saying now, I am happy. I am happy with the church. I am happy with each one of you. And now I'm opening the heavens. I am opening the heavens. And he's pouring these blessings in your direction. Would you receive the blessing of Monday? The blessing of Tuesday? The blessing of Wednesday? The blessing of Thursday? The blessing of Friday? The blessing of Saturday? The blessing of Sunday? The blessing of your children? The blessing of your neighborhood? The blessing of your siblings? The blessings of where you go every time you come and go. The blessing of your business. The blessing of your career. The blessing in your body. The blessing uh, uh, when you breathe in. The blessing when you, br you breathe out. The blessing of your projects. Would you receive the breakthrough blessing right now? Breakthrough blessing right now. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God, I see you are refreshing us abundantly. Rivers of living waters are coming in our direction. Can you see it where you are, my friend? My brother, my sister, can you see it? Rivers of living waters are coming in your direction. And today I decree and declare, what has plagued you for a long time, today is formally broken. Today is formally broken in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let's lift our hands up to God again. My father, these hands are now lifted. As a sign of surrender, we submit fully to you, a hundred percent. Now take this life, Lord, use it powerfully this month for the glory and honor of your name. Today we say again, Jehovah is God over Kenya, over Africa, the whole world. Every other ruling spirit bows down and is, comes down. Every oppression is removed. Every stronghold broken in the name of Jesus Christ. Today as we lift our hands up to God, these are hands of victory. Not only are they hands of brokenness, but hands of victory. And we declare as we move out of this church, as we drive through the gate, Lord, some of us walking, some of us riding, we are going to go with victory. And we shall move from victory to victory. Today I declare you are a carrier of kingdom victory. You are an Elijah. Hallelujah. And everywhere you go, Everywhere you go, there will be victory coming there. Because we prayed in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And we all say, Amen. let's give a hand clap to Jesus, a mighty hand clap to Jesus. There is no God like Jehovah. You know that song? There is no God like Jehovah. There is no other like Jehovah. I don't know the song very well, but I, I can hear it somewhere in my heart. These are the experts in, in worship. Yeah? There is no God like Jehovah and Elijah. In fact, his name, Elijah means Jehovah is God. And he was totally, fully committed to see that Elijah, I mean Jehovah was God in the nation. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. And surely goodness and mercy shall do what? Shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever. Amen. You are blessed. Have a great week.
waiting 